What's up designers? I am Austin, senior designer at Bowens, and today I'm going to be showing you exactly how to make that awesome title sequence that I showed you in the beginning of this video using both Illustrator and After Effects along with your own logo, colors, and, and text of choice. So it should be pretty interesting. Let's do it. So to get started here, exactly what you're gonna to need to do is go ahead and go down to the description to the tutorial link. There should be a tutorial files link down there and it's gonna bring you to this page here on my Google Drive. It's under the Bounds Tutorials folder and then you should just right click and download this simple title sequence. What you're gonna to need to do next is right click on that file, hit extract all. If you're on Windows, if you're on Mac, you can just double click and it'll open up for you. But if you hit extract all, you will see assets, title sequence, and tutorial file. All you're gonna need to do right now is just open up that assets folder and we're gonna leave that there for now. Um, and this is where if you want to migrate over your Illustrator file for your logo, you can go ahead and put it in this folder if you like. Otherwise, you can just follow along with the Bounds logo that's already in there. So what we're gonna need to do is open up this file and we're also gonna open it up After Effects at the same time and we're just gonna make sure everything's all good here with the logo that we want and we're just gonna make sure that once everything is good we're gonna hit file save as and now our logo is saved and it's ready for use in After Effects as long as you save it as that .ai file we don't want to use PNGs or anything else like that just because if we use the Illustrator file it'll keep the vector scalability of the logo that we have and we can use it as a, at a variety of sizes without having to worry about losing resolution or anything like that then what you're going to want to do is go ahead and open up After Effects and once you start After Effects for the first time usually it'll show you a new project screen or a start screen or something like that you can just go ahead and close that it's really redundant I honestly don't know why they have it and you're just going to go ahead and click new composition once you do that you're going to want to make sure that you have these settings applied usually it'll have some sort of preset there for you but in case it doesn't this is exactly what we need we need 1920 by 1080 pixels so that's 1920 width by 1080 height and then the frame rate we want to set to 24 so 24 frames per second at 1080p and then that is going to be a five second timeline so this first number here is for hours this is for minutes the second one and then the third one is for seconds so I feel really bad for anyone who has to fill out that hour spot because uh, the longest project I've ever probably made is about a minute and a half so can't even imagine doing this for hours and hours and hours of footage um, since it already takes so long to fill up just a few seconds so we're gonna go ahead and hit ok and you'll see comp one and you might have a black screen or something like that here um, what we're gonna do after that is we're just gonna go ahead and right click in this section down here you're gonna hit new and then you're going to go to solid and we're just gonna make this this color code it's a nice off black that I like and keep everything else the same really nothing to worry about here you can name it if you want I'll just name ours background for the purpose of this video if I can spell I'm gonna hit okay or enter to do the same thing and you'll see that we have a background solidly now that we have that set there we have our background set it's time to go ahead and import our assets so to do that just grab that folder that I told you to open earlier we're gonna take both of these um, assets that we have here this audio track that I already edited down for you for the use of this tutorial and whatever logo you have so you click on one of them and then hold control and click the other one on your keyboard and it will select both then just drag both of those into this this area over here called the assets panel it's called the project panel but that's just where you put your assets so now you'll see that we have simple title sequence backtrack and we have our logo so we're going to go ahead and add our backtrack down here to the layers panel just by dragging and dropping and now you'll see that we have this audio track that extends a little bit less than five seconds we're going to add in our logo as well usually whenever you add in the, the illustrator file what it'll do is bring up a little panel that says would you like to keep it as footage or a composition and what you'll need to do is put that as footage and not composition to make sure that we can actually edit the file as if it were shapes. That's actually what After Effects is going to do for us here in a minute. Action. So what you'll want to do here is hit L twice on your keyboard when you select the backing track down here and it will bring up a waveform for you. And what I want to do here is mark up the audio to the places where we want actions to happen. So the reason a lot of my work it seems uh, like it flows really well, really a lot of that is just driven by matching up the visuals to the audio itself. So let's give it a real quick listen here. So what I want to do immediately after hearing those percussion beats is just have 
those marked off already as sections for me to uh, use as reference for my other motion here. So the way to do that, we're going to go ahead and deselect. So you, you see how we had it selected earlier. It's highlighted in this lighter color. In order to deselect that layer, we need to click off of it in any of this empty space here. And then once it's deselected, we can go ahead and go to our layer folder up here we're going to hit markers and then you can add marker you'll see mine set numpad asterisk next to it that's the hot key. that's the hot key that i have it set as so yours might say something else like control 8 or something like that depending on if you're on mac or windows but what you'll need to do then is just hit that button and it'll add this little marker here for you and you can drag this around wherever you want but for right now we're just going to want to keep it there because that's where our first thump happens and that's all we really want to do is just mark off exactly where those thuds are and where the beat um, hits throughout this track. So the reason I have it set to this numpad button is so that I can just easily tap it as I'm listening to the song. So that's actually what I'm going to go ahead and do and it'll mark up the whole song for me once I have this deselected. Okay. Okay, I missed one real quick. I missed that second clap. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this one that I accidentally made there. If you accidentally put one in the wrong spot, you can just right click on it and hit delete this marker. They conveniently put it right next to delete all markers. So if that happened to you, you can just go ahead and go back a little bit in this video and go through that portion again. To listen through, you can hit space um, to preview your track. I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, but the way to do that is just by hitting space. So anyway, moving on. Just listen to and make sure listen through and make sure everything's all lined up exactly how you want it and you can see that by this red line as long as it's passing those points whenever the beat is going then you've done a good job so now that we have that marked up we don't need to do anything else with our audio track here so we can just go ahead and click this little arrow next to it to collapse the options that we had pulled up and now what we're going to do is go ahead and open up. So we're going to select this logo file. And right now you'll see it still says AI. And I can't see anything here right now because the logo is actually the same color as the background for me. So the way I'm going to fix that just for you guys is to add a little overlay on it real quick. So you'll see that it's huge. And if you have a high resolution logo file, it's that's larger than this 1920 by 1080, the same thing will happen to you. So what we're going to want to do is just hit S while our layer is selected and we are going to just drag this number down. You can drag either one of these since they're both linked together and you just drag this down until it's at a relatively nice size. Um, and then what we're going to do to make this actually editable for us um, in a more cohesive way is right click the logo file that you have, whatever layer that is for you, hit create and then create shapes from vector layer and then now you'll see that the old AI um, logo layer has been turned off. Their eyeball, that eyeball is off, so you can't preview that layer right now. And it has copied it for you and made it into a shape layer. Now, shape layers are basically the vector version of uh, graphics within After Effects. So anytime you make something with shapes or text in After Effects, those things are vector. If you use images and other things like that, they will still be raster and you'll lose that resolution. Or if you're scaling up um, pre-compositions and things like that. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and make sure that this is where we want it. So if for some reason, whenever you put in your logo file, it got a little bit out of place and it's no longer in the center or something like that, we're gonna make sure that this is aligned to the center. So the way to do that is if it's not already in this panel over to the right, hit window, align. So now that we have this here, what we're going to want to do is make this whatever color we want, this logo. So the easiest way to do that is by going to color overlay. And we're going to go ahead and once you hit, so the way to add that is right click layer styles color overlay and this is the same thing you've seen in Photoshop and other programs like that and so now we have color overlay and this is this red color what I want to do is change it to the balance orange so now I have this nice orange color on the B and we're gonna go ahead and use that so this is where I want to start with my composition so what I'm gonna do is click this little stopwatch here next to color you'll see it adds this little uh, rhombus here or diamond or whatever um, that's called a keyframe and essentially that's just storing that data for the color into that spot and as long as we don't make another keyframe with a different color 
it'll just stay orange throughout the entire composition. Um, right now, I'm going to go ahead and add color overlay to the background as well. You'll see that it, auto, it automatically defaults to this red color. So you just click this little arrow next to color overlay, change the color again. I'll change it back to what it was before. And same thing, you're going to add, you're going to click the stopwatch. So now we have keyframes on both the logo and the background at the same time. And so what we want to do now is what I what I envisioned for this when I first heard that track was uh, the color switching a little bit whenever we have these first few beats here. So what I'm going to do is right before so this marker where our playhead is right now is where we want that color switch to happen so right now if we just add the color that it will need to switch to on both of these so i, I just want to invert that color selection so what i'm doing is just adding i'm switching those colors on those two layers so now the the background is that orange color and the logo is that black but you'll see if we don't do what i'm about to show you it just kind of fades to the different colors. So what After Effects is actually doing is it sees, okay, you made this other change. You probably want to make that kind of, that transition smooth. So what they do is they add in these extra frames for you where it merges the data until it's to the second value. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, anyway, so we I don't want that. I want this to be a really fast change where it just happens on that beat. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna delete both of those keyframes by just uh, undoing through Control Z. And then what I'm going to do, so the way you can zoom in and out on the timeline is just by holding Alt or Option and then scrolling back and forth. And so what I want to do is zoom in until I can see that I have um, much more control over my frames here. So before, if I was out here, I could move it between zero and one really, really fast. But now what I want to do is actually go just one frame at a time. So what I have it set to as a hot key to move one frame forward and backwards, and I'm pretty sure this is the same on most keyboards, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but you can hit page down or page up to move back and forth one frame. I know this is different on Mac OS, so you might need to look that up. Um, it, I can't recall what the hot key is right now, but I'll put it on the screen if I can. And then, so, you can use those hotkeys to move forward one frame and back one frame, or you can just, once you're in the zoomed in position, just move the playhead, this this blue line, over one frame at a time, and it should automatically snap to the next frame. And what's really cool about these markers is that if you hold down shift while dragging your playhead, it'll actually just snap to those cursor to those markers for you. But anyway, we want to move back one frame before this first beat happens. So that way we can tell it within one frame, okay, switch from orange to black. So that way um, it's a much more sudden change and it's like a clap instead of it just kind of fading through, if that makes any sense. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. What I need to do is just remind After Effects that, hey, at this time, right before this beat happens, this needs to be orange. So to do that, I just click this little keyframe icon here and it says add or remove keyframe at current time. So that's exactly what we just did. I'm gonna do the same thing down here to make sure that it's black at that time. And then I'm gonna move over that one frame using page down, page up, or whatever the other keyboard shortcut is. And then I am going to change the color on both of them to the opposite of whatever they were or whatever color scheme you're using it, it doesn't really matter just as long as you're switching it at this time for this tutorial so now you'll see that instead of doing that fading it automatically does that same t like it just switches on a snap instead of actually going through and fading in between which looks kind of boring right now like that's all that's happening but we're gonna add a lot more don't worry about it so what we need to do now is apply the same thing to the other beats here. So I imagine this happening kind of like a, it just keeps flip-flopping for these first few beats until we get back to the original color scheme. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Same technique, I'm gonna bring my playhead to this second, um, the second marker here, and I'm going to go one frame ahead of it. I'm going to add a keyframe to make sure that After Effects knows, hey, this background is still supposed to be orange here, and hey, that the logo is still supposed to be black here. I'm gonna go to that actual marker where the beat happens again and I am going to change it back to whatever the color it was before and then same thing here we're going to go to the next frame or the next marker and then we're going to add another keyframe there making sure that it knows it stays the same throughout that duration in between this marker and that marker and then we go to change it again 
and again up here and see so okay but I don't want it to end on this um, inverted color scheme and then keep going like that forever. So what we're gonna need to do is just make one extra swap right after the beat happens. So in order to do that, and you might not wanna do this if, if, you have an, if you're targeting an audience that has epilepsy or anything like that, um, although it is just one flash, but people can be sensitive at different um, ranges. So what we wanna do is uh, it, we don't need to add another keyframe this time because we're just going to go directly one frame after that marker and we are going to change it back to the color that it was originally and then we will leave it at that for the duration of this composition. So now, so now you can see that it actually follows the music and snaps along with it and even though we haven't actually moved anything around yet it's already much more intuitive than it was if you just had music be play playing behind an image. So let's run that through again. And you could add another one here if you wanted to, but I, at that point, I just kind of think you're overusing it. Um, but to each their own, if you want to modify this and go ahead and add another one of those snaps here, feel free to do so. No harm, no foul. All right, so now what I'm gonna wanna do is add the scale keyframes that you saw at the beginning of that footage where it comes down and then it scales back up and it looks like it's just growing and shrinking over and over again. So what I want to do here is hit S for scale on the keyboard. You can hit S, um, there's a bunch of other hotkeys that are the same across all of them. So if you hit P, it's position. If you hit S, it's scale. A is for anchor point, R is rotation and as creative as Adobe is, they decided that T should be opacity for whatever reason, but we're just gonna use scale for this one. And right now I have it at 19, but the way that I think about this is we're gonna have it change to this desired um, size later on. So we wanna have it be in some ulterior form at the beginning and then it settles into where it is right now. So we're gonna skip to one of these markers here. And since we have this like nice whoosh, ramp right here to be able to do some big transition. I think I'm gonna want it to finish scaling down to this size around the one second mark. That sounds good to me. Um, but whatever works for you, feel free to do that. And what I want it to do is after that first beat, it's just gonna shrink down um, really fast to where it is right now. So what I wanna do is change this number to something like, let's go 30. Um, and that, that's significantly larger than this, but you can see that adding that um, keyframe like we did last time with the, the color overlay, it's the same principle here. You're just adding keyframes by hitting the stopwatch first to make your initial keyframe. And then anytime you change that value, it adds a keyframe for you. So right now, if I wanted to change this to 735, I can just drag it and it adds a keyframe for me, which is really convenient. So now we have those two keyframes and the same way that we saw with the color overlay first, it's gonna fade between those two values. So right now it just, there's no acceleration until it gets to where it wants to be at that second value. So to make it more exciting and change that, I'm going to click and drag to select both of these keyframes. And then I'm going to hit F9 on my keyboard. It's different on, on some systems, but you can just hit F9 or if you want, you can just right click and you can go to keyframe assistant and then easy ease. I haven't done that in a really long time. I'm used to using these keyboard shortcuts. Use the keyboard shortcuts. They will absolutely save time in so many different ways for you. So now we have these two hourglass shapes instead of the diamonds. And now what we're gonna do is select both of them and we are going to click graph editor. And usually how this will show up for you first is it will show up looking like this, should look something like that. And this is called the value graph. And when you change things here, it will just change the value of the numbers that you have put in. But we, what we want is to, is to change that speed. We want some acceleration in there. That's what makes it really pop. So we're going to right click in this empty grid space here and go to edit speed graph instead of value graph. So once you're there, it'll look kind of like this hump thing. Um, and you'll see that that's only because we added easy ease. If you look at this without the easy ease on it, it's just linear. There's no change in speed there. Um, but if we even have that little bit of easy ease, it looks 10 times better off the bat. Um, you can see that it has that little bit of acceleration where it starts off slow, it goes fast, goes fast, and then it slows down. Um, but even that is a little too bland for me. So what we're gonna do is make this 
really pop. And what we're gonna do in order to make that happen, think of this line here, this graph, as some curve that you made with a pen tool. Um, in Illustrator, Photoshop, or wherever you use it, um, we're going to click and drag to select this left-hand anchor point. And you'll see that just like using the pen tool, you have these, these little anchor point adjusters that are, that are sitting right next to it. So what we wanna do is adjust this curve. So I'm going to click on this little anchor point handle here, and I'm going to hold down shift so that it does in a straight line, and I'm going to drag straight to the left, and you'll see that it changes this in real time. So I'm gonna do the same thing over on this anchor point, and now, this graph shows that it has a really, really fast speed at the beginning that slows down. So it's changing from 30. So you'll see in this first room here, it changes from 30 to 27 to 25. Blah, 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 blah. And so it's changing really fast at the beginning. You'll see that once I play this for you, which looks 10 times better in my opinion than either of the two options I showed you beforehand. So now we have pretty much all the motion we need for this first section here up until one second. There's really not too much else that we want to add here. What we want to do first is finish out these scale keyframes. Um, so what I want to do is at this marker here at two seconds where it has that sound right before it, that's where something big should happen just by how the music is composed. What I want to do is make it scale up and then back down really fast and the fastest point whenever it's scaling down is going to be at this marker right here and you'll see that in that first video um, that i played at the beginning of this of this tutorial in order to do that we are going to bring it up a little bit here you can go to like back to 30 or something like that um, it doesn't really need to be too much you can probably actually go back to down to 25 as long as you can significantly tell that it's grown from this second keyframe then what you need to do is just drag and select those two keyframes here and you're gonna see that it's back to this weird slope looking thing but what we want for this section now is to make a mountain peak so that way it'll be super slow speed and then it goes really fast and then it slows down again and i'll show you what that looks like here so we're going to select this left hand anchor point hold shift drag it until it's to the center hold shift drag this one left into the center and now we have this mountain peak so you'll see that it so you have it go really fast and then it goes and then once, so that looks kind of weird right now, but don't worry, we're gonna have it go back down. We're gonna act like this is a trampoline. Now that it's at its peak here, we're gonna do the same effect that we just did here, except we are going to have that peak be located at this time here, which is 122, I think, uh, one second, 22 frames. In order to do that, where you can see that the peak for this section here is right in between those two keyframes. So you can go back here, and the peak lines up right in the center. If we want it to be at the fastest point here, we need the other keyframe from here to be the same distance from this marker that this keyframe currently is. So I'm gonna count those um, just by hitting whatever button it is for you that just moves you forward one frame. Um, so I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12 keyframes is all we need to move next to have that second keyframe. Okay, it's a little bit after this marker, which is fine. We're not really syncing this part up to the music right now because the part that syncs up to the music will be when this peak is in the center. Anyway, so what we need to do now is I'm gonna bring it back down to something like 14 and I'm gonna make the same mountain peak except this time it's going to be a really sharp valley. So now looking at that, that actually doesn't look quite right. I think these need to move a little bit closer here. I think it lingers on a little bit too long. We need this to come down really fast. So what we're gonna do to make it match the music a bit more. Right now, that matches it a lot more, is having this be relatively quick, this part where it comes up, and now we need this part where it comes back down to last a little longer, because right now it kind of just seems like it hits the ground and it just stops moving and there's no momentum there. Um, we just lost all of it, which is a little strange. So what we need to do is add a keyframe right in the middle of those two keyframes. Make sure they're the same distance apart from this marker. And then we're gonna add another keyframe right in the center. It'll keep that easing we already applied to it via the speed graph, via the graph editor. And then, so right now, if I look at this, now there's just an anchor point, or yeah, an anchor point right at the middle of this. So what we need to do is just drag this out quite a ways. And now when you look at it, 
there's that nice like it's it's giving it time to be able to slow down and it matches a lot more with the music so right now this is at about two and a half seconds we're gonna move this up to this other marker here we're gonna add a keyframe same way we were doing it with the color overlay um, you need to tell after effects again um, if you want it to stay still for a while you need to just tell after effects hey this scale is applied for this entire length of time by just adding another key from there. So there's no change in scale throughout this entire time. Had we not added this here and just gone straight from this to whatever higher value we are gonna put on it, it would have already started applying that easing all the way back here and not giving you any time to actually look at the logo. What we wanna do now is just go ahead and drag our cursor over to a little bit before this last marker here. And we are going to bring it up slightly. Let's go to around 21. Um, it's going to vary depending on the size of your logo, but just, just bring it up a little bit. And then we've added that easing on there, same as we did last time. And then this last thud is where we just need it to be at its peak acceleration. And that's where the logos, you're not going to see the logo anymore for the rest of this composition. What we need to do is go ahead and then bring this down to smaller than we've ever put it before. Um, and then we're gonna go in here, go to graph editor. You are going to take the first anchor point, drag it all the way to the right. Take the second anchor point, drag it all the way to the right. And now we have, we haven't seen this acceleration curve the whole time yet. Um, so far we've only done ones where it goes, uh, the peak is at the left and then it slows down. We've done ones where the peak is in the center and now we need one where the peak is at the right. And basically what that means whenever it's at the right is that you're starting off super, super slow. And then the last frame is where it will be moving fastest, which normally looks very funny, but situationally right now, this works for us with the track. So now we look through and you'll see here, it goes back up and down. I actually think that moves up quite a bit too much right there. It shouldn't be moving up that much. We want the logo to completely disappear at this point where it's moving the fastest. So what we need to do to make that happen is select our logo layer. We are going to make sure that their playhead is on the last marker and then we're going to hit control or command shift D. And this will cut our layer in half and it just brings this last little bit up onto its own layer. We don't need this last bit of the layer, so we're just going to delete it. Now, once it hits that peak, it's just gone. And see, that looks way better than, than before we added that in there. There's only one last little thing that we need to add, and that is going to be our rotation keyframes. So we're gonna hit R on the keyboard, that opens up this little rotation bar down here. And then you are going to hit the little stopwatch to add a keyframe at zero degrees. And then we want at, actually let's, let's move this keyframe a little bit farther out front here. So we're gonna want, same thing how the scale happens so quickly at this part where there's a lot of, uh, where there's a lot of sound going on. We want the same thing to happen with the rotation. I just want this to be tilted slightly whenever it reaches that peak in the center. So this, that middle part right there we want it to rotate a little bit. So we have these two keyframes now, one is at 30 degrees and one is at zero. Zero is the default value. We're gonna select both, hit F9 to add easy ease or right click uh, keyframe assistant easy ease. And then we are going to go ahead, select both of those. We're gonna go into graph editor and we are going to make another peak formation. I really need to come up with better names for these. And you'll see that now it has that little bit of rotation. So it's just adding an extra little layer of motion to what we already had there. So now that we have our actual logo all set up and ready to go, now we can start adding that cool stroke, stroked effect to the logo where uh, we lose the fill and it's just the outline left and there's some extra logo outline things going on around it. We're gonna go ahead and do that now. Same way we cut this logo at the end here and it made that second layer, we are gonna go ahead and hit Control Shift D at this very middle portion where it's at its peak in the song. Now that we have these two sections, we can technically think of this as two different logo layers. So what I'm gonna do is right click on the first one and name that logo layer one and then i'm going to go ahead and right click on the other layer and go to logo layer 
two. In order to remove the fill, we hit fill. We just click the word fill, and then you change it to none by clicking this box here. And you'll see if we click off of here, nothing is there right now. It doesn't have a stroke or anything. Click this little arrow here down to the side. We're gonna hit add, and then we are going to click stroke. And now if I go out here, we have a little stroke on there. So just go into layer styles and then hit color overlay and delete. And now you'll see that it's that white color that it's set to as default or whatever color I used beforehand. This stroke right now is a little small. You're not really gonna be able to see that on a lot of uh, on a lot of things. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to something like 12. 12 looks about right. Um, can maybe even go a little bit higher, like 15, something like that. That looks fine. Uh, it's kind of a thick outline on it, but it'll, it'll work out. So now what we wanna do is change that to our same color that we had on our um, previous logo layer. So right now, technically what we're doing is called a match cut. We're going to be significantly changing what our secondary scene is, but as long as we keep that trail of motion the same, which we already set up, because whenever I delete it or I cut that layer in half, the cool thing about After Effects is that it keeps the same keyframes on that second layer, so it'll continue to move in the same easing and the same values that we set in layer one. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to the color that we had originally. What we want to go ahead and do is visually change the style of this second part of the scene a little a, a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is add a bit of glow. We're going to right click anywhere in this empty space here. Let's actually go ahead and close all of the expanded parts of our layers. And to do that, you just click these little arrows next to the layer name. So we're gonna go down here in this empty space. We're gonna hit new. We're going to go to adjustment layer and that adds this, this layer, this empty layer, it's kind of a null um, layer to the top of our composition. And there's nothing in it right now, it's not doing anything, but we're gonna go ahead and cut it in half at that same space that we cut the logo layer in half. We're gonna go ahead and delete that first portion by selecting it and hitting delete. So there's nothing that this layer actually really does right now. It's not moving around, when it, or nothing's changing when we move it around or anything like that. Um, but what we can do with this, the adjustment layer is made just so that you can add effects to your composition without directly having to affect your other layers. Like um, it's essentially just non-destructive editing to what you've already put in your composition. So what we're gonna do to add our glow is select our adjustment layer. We're gonna hit effect, go to stylize and glow. And then you'll see that I add a little bit of glow. You can't really see it yet but we're gonna go ahead and increase the radius here to somewhere around 40. And then the intensity, we're gonna bring up to three. Yeah, let's just stop it at three. So now you can see that with that, um, it's added quite a significant amount of glow there. It's different from outer glow and inner glow. It, it just works directly over the top of your composition without really having to change anything. Um, but like I said, there are better plugins out there that make a more realistic looking glow. But for the purpose of this tutorial, this will work just fine. So now that we have that all set up and ready to go, we've got glow on our composition. We're gonna go ahead and actually just cut it off at the same time that our logo layer cuts off. So that way we don't have to worry about glow accidentally um, being added on to everything else that we have after this portion of the composition. So right now you can go through here, watch it again. And it's just a completely different visual style. It's not too different to where it's completely jarring to whoever's watching it, but it's enough to get their attention. Um, so now what we're gonna do is go ahead and make this transition a little bit easier. Um, right now it's kind of a, it's kind of a jarring transition to just have uh, all of a sudden it goes from fill to not fill. So what we're gonna do is make this flicker a little bit. This filled layer, we're gonna make it flicker. So we're gonna hit T for opacity for whatever reason that they decided to have that be the hotkey. And we're gonna go ahead and move back five or six frames. We're gonna add an opacity keyframe at 100 there. Should automatically be set to 100 because that's how you know that you can actually see your layers if it's at 100. It's the same opacity as all the other programs, works the same way. So we're gonna start at that keyframe. We're gonna move two frames. We're gonna change it to zero. We're gonna move one frame, change it back to 100, one frame back to zero, and back to 100 on the very last frame. So now when we go through, it's a much more seamless transition. You're already set up to be thinking that it's gonna to go to outlined, and then it's just a lot smoother. So. 
Now that we have all the transitions set up and everything ready to go, we can go ahead and add those extra assets that were floating around around this logo. And the way we're gonna do that is we're going to duplicate this layer by hitting com Control or Command D, it just duplicates it, and we want the one that's underneath this logo layer three now. So we wanna work on logo layer two still. And we're gonna go ahead and expand the layer. We're gonna hit this little arrow icon. We're gonna hit Add and we're going to hit trim paths. And trim paths is essentially um, what lets you make the stroke come to life on any given shape in After Effects. So what it does is it takes any line that you have and it gives you a percentage to work with. So um, if you start at zero and then you have the ending percentage at 100, then um, it goes from being completely not like the lines not there at all and then once it gets closer to 100 it's slowly filling in that line and it's like it's drawing it on the screen for you it's very it's very uh, useful effect to use there's lots of different ways you can use it so we can see that right now i'm actually going to turn off the preview for layer three so that we can see this layer a bit better and you can see that right now the end is set to 100. The naming in After Effects is very redundant and does not make a lot of sense. Right now, there's this thing called start and end, which is 100. So you would think that right now, okay, the starting value is of zero and the ending value is 100. That's not the best way to think about it. Right now, actually, if I just drag end down to zero, it's gone. If I drag it up and I make it 31, it's 31% 31 of the way filled in. You can mix these two up and make some very dynamic looking effects, which we're going to do, but it's just don't get too caught up in the names, that's all. So what we want to have it start off with is it being completely not filled. So I'm going to go ahead and add a keyframe at end of zero. So that's going to add to a little keyframe there. I'm going to go ahead and move ahead 20 or so keyframes. Let me count that out real quick. And now that we're ahead 20 keyframes, that's a pretty solid number for most um, short movements and things in 24 frames per second. We're going to go ahead and change that end value to any any number in between 30 and 80, something like that. We just don't want it to be completely filled in or it'll start to look a little strange. So I'm going to make this one 64 just for fun. And you'll see that it's 64% filled in. We can't really tell what the logo is right now and that's not the point because what we already have this layer t layer 3 that shows our logo and it's and it's we sh that shows the full logo and layer two is just going to be a backing asset that's larger than that original logo so what we have now is it's at 64 so if we go through and did my mouse just die so for whatever reason my mouse just died on me no idea what happened there not cool but anyway <laughs> where we left off what we need to do is go ahead and scale this layer up. So I'm going to go ahead and hit S for scale and I'm going to take just this these two keyframes right here and Enlarge this so we were at 14 originally or something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up by Let's say plus 20 and if you just type in plus it'll just add it for you there and now we've got so we've got this extra one around here um, which is layer two and then layer three is our original layer we open the layer we go to contents we hit stroke and then we're going to make that a different color so we're going to make it um, like a third color in whatever we're um, whatever our color scheme is so uh, I'm actually noticing now that this glow is kind of crazy. So what I'm going to do is actually increase the radius there and bring the intensity down a touch. Cool. That looks a little bit better to me. Now you'll notice that the weird, um, the weird part about this is that we're kind of losing the integrity of this logo in the center. So instead, what we're going to do is go ahead and right click on layer three, go to layer styles, stroke, we're just adding a stroke uh, layer style to this. We're not actually adding um, an extra stroke to the shape or anything like that. We're going to go ahead and click this eyedropper tool, select the background color, and then we're going to bring the size of this stroke up. And now you'll notice that there's this nice break in between the background and, or in between the center shape and the lines being made by this back shape here. Go back to our logo layer two, this bottom layer. We'll open up our trim paths again underneath contents. And you'll see that, so we have, it starts off um, at zero, zero. There's, there's nothing there. 
and then it comes up here and it fills in. We're gonna want it to be gone by about right here. We're gonna want the, the stroke to be gone. So what we're gonna do, these start and end values over here, they have an inverse relationship. So if we make a start keyframe here and then we have it start at zero and we have the start value over where we want it to end at anywhere around um, that original value there, then we are we are good to go. It will not be there anymore because they're they're canceling each other out. So now we we don't have any easing on this yet. We have these uh, moving up and down, but what we're gonna want, we're gonna want to do just to make it a little bit more interesting to look at is make this offset value here. We're gonna tick this um, stopwatch at a keyframe at zero zero, and offset does exactly what you think would think it would do. If I I can show you here, if I hit offset, it just moves those lines around. So it's still the same amount that's filled in. It's sixty four percent of the of the logo or the shapes made making the logo up but moving this around just changes where that 64 percent starts and stops on the shape so you don't want to go too crazy with this i'm probably going to add, make this around like 60 degrees or something like that and then whenever i want this to end i'm going to add another um I'm probably gonna bring this up to like 109 or something like that. So I'm gonna select all of these keyframes. I'm gonna hit F9 on my keyboard or right click to easy ease them. And then once they're all easy eased, that they're hourglasses, we're going to go one by one, or we're gonna go by um, category first. So for the start and end, those are essentially the, the same way that we're gonna work with these. So what we want to happen here is we want it to start off on that like snap. It's gonna come in really fast. So we're gonna make this we're gonna make the peak on the left side here, and then the right side, or the the uh, start keyframes where it's going back out, we're going to make that go all the way to the end. So we're making basically a half pipe, and you'll notice that the peak on the right side is way higher than this one, and that's because we're changing the value by a lot greater of a number. So now we have the start and end changing the way that it should. So we're gonna to go to offset, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. Um, it's going to be the same look and everything. It's just whenever you select all of these at once, they can tend to get kind of jumbled up. That one wouldn't have, but just it's good practice to do it separately, um, unless you find it easier to do it the other way. What I'm noticing now is that we completely forgot to make the rotation go back to where it was before. So I'm gonna go ahead and select both of our logo layer um, three and two. Um, we don't really have to worry about layer one because it'll never be affected by this part. So up until now, these were all duplicates of the same piece frames um, in terms of transformations but what I want to do now is make these snap back to zero degrees by the very end so I'm gonna add a zero degree keyframe to both of these I'm gonna select both of those I think I'm actually gonna have it do a middle peak instead I don't want all I don't want everything lining up at that very last um, keyframe there it's better to stagger out the animations whenever things tend to look like they're um, getting all jumbled up. It just makes your composition look more diverse if you offset where those keyframes are. Let's watch that another time too. Yep, that's much better. And you'll even see that this lines up with that beat where the rotation snaps back. So that's that's very, very nice. Um, what we're gonna wanna do actually is on this layer three, I'm noticing that I still see a little bit more of the white lines behind it than I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and go down here to stroke on layer styles. And I'm going to increase that size to 18 or something like that. That that looks a little bit better to me. I might make it even larger, honestly, and just have it block. I don't want it blocking it out completely. Um, so whatever just feels right to you is really just what you should be going for here. So now we have one of those down. We have one of the copies down. So we're gonna make a copy. So what we're gonna do is hit Control D after selecting our layer two, and that'll make us a layer four. So now we're gonna go back to layer two. That's the one that we're gonna keep editing throughout the rest of this process. And we want to do the same process we just went through. We're gonna hit S to bring up scale, we're gonna select these two keyframes here that are the same for that period of time. And we're going to increase it by 30 again, 30 scale percentage. And then, so now we have one that's that's much larger than the other. The only other things we have to change, again, we're gonna go into here, we're going to go to contents, we're gonna to go to stroke, we're going to 
change the color back to this center color. We don't want it to be where it's the center color and then all of the rest of them are this completely crazy different color. Um, we want to balance it out visually. So now you'll see that that white isn't completely overpowering the rest of our composition. So now that we have that color changed, we want to, again, like I was talking about earlier, diversify our composition by offsetting some of those keyframe values. So we're going to go ahead and go to trim paths within layer two that we just added to make that color. And we are going to go to these middle values here and we are going to just change them to something different. So the offset for me should be somewhere around, let's just make it something completely different. Just looks completely visually different from the other one that was on there. So we're making it look as far from the white copy as we possibly can. So the offset went up quite a bit for that reason. And then we're gonna change the end to somewhere just down here. We, we don't want it to be showing up too much, especially since it's so much larger. But that does mean though that we have to change the ending start value here. We have to change that to 34 just to match it so it goes away. And then let's watch this through. And by the way, if you're having a hard time, um, whenever you're previewing these, it, depending on the specs of your computer, it could um, preview these for you faster or slower. So right now I'm able to work on this at full quality, but some of you might want to go down to quarter and it'll render out a lot faster. You just won't be able to see the full quality while you're while you're previewing it and editing the file. I'm just going to go ahead and make another one of those copies real quick and I'll make it one more white one. And what I actually want to do now is go ahead and so originally we made that layer three 15 stroke, uh, 15 pixels for the stroke. So what we want to do, because these are getting so much larger around it and it's kind of just dominating over it, we're going to want to bring that back a little bit. So for this white copy, let's just cut it in half. And then for this um, larger orange copy, we're going to cut it in half and then we're going to cut it in half again. So we'll get to like three and a half stroke. So now it's just a little bit more balanced. What we're going to need to do now is I'm just going to make another one of these copies, layer two again. I'm going to change the color. I am going to cut it in half again right before I scale it up. So I'm going to go here, select those keyframes again. It's the same process, just over again. We're going to go up to 94 because we're adding another 30. And now I just have to offset the trim paths a little bit more. Just make sure that those those last um, start keyframes are matching your, your end keyframe value. So that way you have it going away when we need it. We are all good with everything relating to the logo now movements all good i like the amount of copies that i have feel free to change it to whatever you want um, adapt it however you'd like to but now we are going to get to that last bit where we have our text show up so what we want to do now is switch the color back again like you can see in that first video that i showed so we're going to switch the background color going to go into layer styles color overlay doing the same thing where we go one frame before the switch is going to happen Add another keyframe of whatever color is already currently there. Change the color on the next keyframe to our original. And then now we are going to add a text layer. So we're gonna collapse everything here so that way we can see the whole timeline. And I'm gonna go ahead and change my font here. Um, you'll notice that I opened up the character panel whenever I grab the type tool. If it's not already there for you, just go to window and character and it'll pop right up for you. So you can change your font, you can change your weight, you can change the size, you can change the, the letting, you can change the uh, tracking or kerning of the, of the letters and everything that you would normally be able to do in Illustrator or Photoshop or any of those programs. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color to the color that was the background previously. And I'm gonna go ahead and just type out balance. I'm gonna go ahead and align it with the center again. That's definitely something that you're gonna to need to do every time when you type, unless you magically are able to type in the very center of the screen every time. Um, if you really wanna make sure that it is aligned to the center, you can click this little button down here that says choose grid and guide options, and you can hit title action safe. And you'll see that this little cross here is the exact center of whatever composition you're working with. And it's perfectly aligned because we use the align panel. So we can see that whenever we made that text layer, it stretches across the entire timeline, which is what we don't want. So we're going to go ahead and cut it right at that last marker there by, ho by doing control shift D like we did prior. And we are going to select the text layer. So what we want to happen. So right now let's, I'll watch it through and it's going to go back and then it's going to shrink down and it switches to this, which is kind of a jarring change if nothing else happens with the text after this. It looks fine. Um, it's kind of cool that it's just, that's where it ends. 
makes it really powerful. Everybody is focused exactly on what that text says. There's no way they're going to forget it. Um, but we can spice it up a little bit. So what we're going to do is select our text layer here. We're going to open up the, uh, we're going to expand the layer by clicking this little arrow next to it. We're going to hit animate this little triangle next to it. Tracking. What we want our tracking to end up being is where it is right now or wherever you had it set to. So right now I have it set to zero. So I'm going to change, so I'm going to find the end of my composition here, which would be right where our music ends there. And I'm going to create a keyframe for the tracking amount of zero. That's what I'm clicking right there, creating a keyframe tracking amount at zero. And I want it to start similar to how we did over here where it starts really large and then it comes back down and settles in. We are going to make the tracking just a little bit wide. Um, not too far, you don't really want to go too crazy with it. I'm going to make this about like 20, otherwise it'll be too jarring of a change. I'm going to select both of those keyframes, I'm going to hit my graph editor, I'm going to select this left hand, move it to the left, and then I'm going to select the right and move it to the left as well. And now we have our peak on the left, which means super fast at the start and it slows down. So we're going to go ahead and watch that through. And the cool thing is, if for some reason you decide to change this text afterwards, you can just, as long as you're using those actual um, text animators within the layer itself, you can type out whatever you want, like title here, and it will still apply the exact same tracking. Like we don't have to redo that animation or those keyframes ever again. So that is one really, really nice thing about After Effects. Now you'll notice that we have this little bit of just extra time left here, which if you want to just leave your text hanging there for a little while is fine, but I'd rather mine just cut off as soon as this track ends. What you want to do is move your, move your playhead to the very end of the music track. You can just drag it there. I didn't make a marker for it or anything, so you'll just have to do that. And then you are going to add a marker. Mine is numpad, asterisk, yours is whatever it was before that we used at the beginning of this video. It could be control eight or anything like that. We're going to click this little, if you hover over this little blue, um, little blue marker at the very end of your timeline down here, not the one up at the top. We're going to use this one in the work area. And we're going to hold down our mouse button, our left click, and then we're going to hold shift and we're going to wait. We're going to drag it over it and it'll snap. Once it gets to a marker, it'll snap to it. You'll notice it. And then we're going to hit control shift and X that will shift our timeline to where originally we set it to be five seconds long, whenever we were making the composition, but now it is four seconds and six frames exactly. And I did that just because that's the only time I actually have this filled in for the music. That's all. Um, if you want to, again, if you want to leave it hanging for a little bit, perfectly fine, go for it. But that's just not what I'm trying to do right now. And we go back and watch it. We've got our title sequence. Once we've got our title sequence all set and ready to go, make sure that your resolution is set back to full. We're not gonna to need to be previewing again, so we don't have to worry about it slowing us down in the process. So just make sure it's on full for the full quality. We're gonna hit file, export, add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. If you don't have Media Encoder installed, you can get it from Creative Cloud, but it should have already come installed if you have either Premiere or After Effects. So we're going to wait for this to launch. Once it launches, give it a second and it'll add your composition to this panel over here. If it doesn't add for some reason, you can just always go back and tell it to add it again. Sometimes After Effects needs a good reminder or two. We're going to go ahead and click this um, this little blue link under where it says output file. We're going to click that and we're going to go to wherever we want to export our footage and we're going to title it whatever we want. So I'll call this simple title sequence tutorial version. I already have the original ones in there. So that's why there's extra files in there. And you're good. What you're going to want to make sure is that it's set to H.264. So the way to do that is click match source high bitrate or just H.264. Wait for it to load. It's going to say connecting to dynamic link server for a little bit. Once it loads, make sure your format is set to H.264. Ensure that your title is correct. Make sure that you have 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. And once that's all good to go, you can scrub through and make sure that everything's all good here. And if that's good to go, just hit play, it'll export for you. It goes rather fast. This tutorial really doesn't take that long to export, at least on my computer. It'll vary depending on your system, but uh, it, it's fairly simple for it to render. It goes really fast. So you can pump these out like crazy once you actually have this file ready to go. Now you've got your title sequence and you're ready to take over the motion design world. Next week, we're gonna be looking at a short title sequence again. It's a little bit longer this time. That's probably around eight seconds or so that I made back in 2018 when I was still a senior in high school working for my high school news program. 
and uh, I'll show it to you on the screen. It should be on the screen right now. Um, but we're going to take a look at that, teach you guys how to do something very similar. And yeah, that's what we're looking like we're going to do. So thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment below if I missed anything, or I'm sure there's some improvements that need to be made. This is the first tutorial I've ever done. Um, let me know down below. Subscribe if you're looking for more. Hit the bell. You'll get notified every single time that I upload. And yeah, thanks for watching.